Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on managing devices. In this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our CompTIA a 220-702. That's our practical application exam, section 2.3, where we need to select and use system utilities. And we're going to focus on using the Windows Device Manager. Inside of the Windows Device Manager, we can enable devices, disable devices, look at warnings, and understand the indicators that are inside of the Device Manager screen. When we talk about managing devices, we should take a step back for a moment and think about what that really means. Whenever we have a piece of hardware that is used with a computer, there's really no way for the operating system to magically know how to communicate with that external device. These pieces of hardware are made by so many different companies. There are mice, there's keyboards, there's video cards. The operating system obviously is something that's created. And then there might be a new mouse is manufactured, a brand new model. Obviously, the operating system would have no idea how to interoperate with that piece of hardware. It wasn't even around when the operating system was made. That's why we have device drivers. Device drivers allow us to sit right in the middle there, have the operating system talk to the device driver in a language it understands. And obviously, the device driver is written to communicate properly to the hardware. Device drivers are very specific to both the hardware and the operating system. That means that if you have a device driver that works in Windows 2000, that same driver is not going to work in Windows XP, and that same driver is not going to work in Windows Vista. Whenever you change operating systems, that's one of the first things you have to do is make sure that all of the hardware that you have is going to interoperate properly with the new operating system. You have to check to see, are there drivers for this mouse in Vista? Are there drivers for that keyboard in Windows Vista? And that way you know you can upgrade from XP to Vista without a problem. And that's one of the first questions very often that's asked by technical support is, have you updated the drivers, especially if you're running into problems? These device drivers have occasionally bugs in them. And the manufacturers will always put on their website the latest versions of these drivers. And you can download them, install the latest version, and be up to date. And then if you're still having a problem, then you can contact technical support and try to troubleshoot from there. In Windows 2000, Windows XP, you access the device driver from the control panel under System. There is a Hardware tab, and you choose Device Manager. A little bit complicated to finally get there. A couple of clicks here, click on a tab there, finally find what you're looking for. But when you finally get there, you'll see a screen that looks a little bit like this on the Device Manager that lists all of the different devices, all the pieces of hardware that Windows has found inside of your computer. And it will also give you notifications of things that may be going wrong. You can see on this, this particular device manager screen, one of these ports is disabled. Another one has a, a exclamation mark inside of this yellow marker. We would need to now drill down further into that to find out what's going on. And we'll certainly do that in this module. But keep in mind that if you're working in Windows Vista, it's exactly the same front end. It looks a little bit different with the fonts, but you can see it uses the same functionality. It's the same capabilities in Windows Device Manager. But to get there, it's been simplified. Because people use the Device Manager so much, you no longer have to drill down into the system component and then the tabs that I mentioned. You simply go now go to the Control Panel, and there will be an option inside of the Control Panel for Device Manager. Let's look at the Device Manager in Windows XP. I'm going to go to my Start menu under Settings. Let's choose the Control Panel. And in there, I have a System option. And inside the System option is a Hardware tab. And finally, the Device Manager. It takes you a long time to get all the way over there. But you can see the Device Manager itself. I'm going to get rid of these other windows so we can focus on this Device Manager screen. The Device Manager is going to tell us what's going on, what other devices we have inside of our system. We can click on these plus signs, and we'll get information about what other devices happen to be underneath those. Now you can see on some of these devices, like this is the video adapter that's inside of this virtual machine that I'm running, I can look at the properties by right mouse clicking and choosing Properties. And we can see that Device Manager says, well, this device is working properly. If it wasn't working properly, we would know that because there would be something down here right here, for instance, and it would have a different icon next to it. In fact, you'll notice when we went into Device Manager that those particular categories were already expanded out 
we didn't have to click to get down to see those. When we showed up, it looked just like this already because there was a device inside of there that was not working properly. So let's look at this uh, printer driver. I'm going to hit the properties. And it says that this device is disabled. And that's what that red X means when you're in Windows XP in the device manager is that the device is disabled. And there's a big button here that says enable device. And if you wanted to enable the device, it says, are you sure you want to enable this device? And it may be disabled administratively, or it may have been uh, been disabled because it was causing a problem. In this case, I disabled it so that we could see it was disabled. So I know there's not a problem with that particular port. So I'm going to enable it and click Finish. And you can see when we go back to our screen that the printer port now does not have one of those icons next to it. If you want to re-disable that uh, particular device, we can do exactly the same thing. We can choose the properties. We can then choose to do not use this device to disable, and we can disable it from there. Now, you'll also notice when I right mouse clicked, disable and enable are also in those right mouse click menus that come right up. So if you want to enable that way, you can be very quick about it, and it will simply enable that piece. Down here on the SCSI and RAID controller, though, it's a different icon. I have a, a yellow circle here with an exclamation mark inside of it. So something else is going on with that particular device. Let's, let's go ahead and look at the properties of that one. And this is a SCSI controller. I have a SCSI hard drive that I've added to this virtual machine, and it's not working. And it's not working because Windows cannot load the device driver for this hardware. The driver may be corrupted or it's missing. Well, I did not add the SCSI driver into the system, so that's why it's missing. I can't get to that hard drive. Let's install that driver and see if we can't get that SCSI drive operating. Since we're working with a SCSI drive and I need to get this drive controller loaded, I can probably check the status of how things are going using my disk management program. We have a video that we've done previously. You can go back and look at our disk management. We're going to go to our control panel under our administrative tools. Let's start our computer management screen. And inside of computer management is obviously the disk management option. So here is the disk that I have in here currently, which is the single drive that I'm using to boot from. And I've added another drive, but because the driver is not there for the SCSI controller, it obviously can't see the hard drive that is connected to that SCSI controller. So let's see what we can do. Let's minimize that. And under the SCSI controller, I'm going to do a couple of things. You can update driver directly from there. You can also go to the properties, and you can go to the driver tab. And this gives you some other options for drivers where you can look at the details of the driver. You can update the driver. You can roll back the driver then in case you accidentally install a driver that has a problem associated with it, you can click a button. There's a set of backups that Windows keeps for these drivers, and you can revert to a previous version. Or you can uninstall the driver completely. Now, this driver has never been installed, but it, I can update what's already there by clicking the Update button. And it says that Windows can go out to Windows Update to search for the software. Now, in this case, I've already been to the manufacturer's website. I've already downloaded the files that we are going to need to update this. In fact, there's a folder right here on the desktop that says SCSI that has the drivers I need inside of it. I'm going to say, therefore, don't go out to Windows Update. If this is an unknown device, maybe you'd like to go out to Windows Update, see if it can find the driver. And if it finds a match, it will install those drivers automatically. And it says this will allow me to install software for my SCSI controller. I can install the software automatically, or I can install from a list or a specific location. And that is what I'd like to do, is choose exactly where this particular driver is. I can have it search removable media in case that came on a floppy disk or CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. You can do that. I'm going to include this location in the search. And it's not the A colon. I'm going to actually browse out to this section on my computer and have it go out. Uh, this happens to be in my uh, documents and settings for the logged in user on the desktop. There's my SCSI folder. There it is. We'll click plus and uh, have it include this location in the search and click Next. And it says that we need a sys file for this SCSI controller. And we're going to type the path where this SCSI controller is located. And again, I have it in that same directory that's right off of my desktop. And there it is. There's the sys file. So it may take you a couple of times to have the, the installation of the driver process find the right place. I had to specify twice 
where that was located. But now that it found all the files that it really needed, it says that it has finished installing the software. So we were successful there. And now it says that this is the VMware SCSI controller. We see a lot of different information associated with it. And if we look at the general tab, we can see that now this device is working properly. And that's what I'd hope to see. Now I know that I can use this SCSI controller because the operating system can now make use of it. And if I go back into my computer management screen, you see I do indeed have a new disk in there that has not been formatted. I've not allocated any space or partitions on there, but that wasn't there before. I had no way to see that disk because my disk controller had no device driver associated with it. By simply installing the device driver, now I can access this disk, and now I can begin working with this disk formatting it and getting the things that I'd like to have installed and, and loaded onto this new drive. One thing to keep in mind when you're installing those new drivers, you have to be administrator on the machine to install them properly. If you do not have administrator access, you will not be able to install those device drivers. Or if you try to, you may end up having problems there. You might also see a screen pop up when you install certain drivers saying that the drivers are unsigned and you should be careful about installing those. An unsigned driver is a driver that has not gone through a process that Microsoft has to check and make sure that that driver is something that they can sign off on, that they can put a check mark next to to put into Windows. They go, it goes into Microsoft's labs. They do some tests with it. If it's gone through that process, then it's a signed driver and it works exactly the way that we just installed the driver from the VMware. If it's an unsigned driver, another message pops up. A box pops up in the middle of it that says, just so you know, this is an unsigned driver, and you're on your own. Microsoft hasn't really tested this one before. You're really relying on the manufacturer of the person who built the hardware or created that device driver to make sure it's going to work properly, just as a warning. And then you can decide at that point, yes, please continue with the installation, or no, we'll, we'll not install that device driver at this time. Occasionally, when you're installing a new piece of hardware or even a new device driver, it tells you first, before you install this new driver, I'd like you to uninstall the current driver. So if that's the case with you, you can always right mouse click on any of these drivers, and you can choose to uninstall the driver. And it says it will remove it from your system. You can click OK, and it will disappear. Then you can shut down your Windows. You can remove that piece of hardware from your computer. And now when you start your computer up again, you know there won't be a driver there that's looking for that piece of hardware because you've already uninstalled it. Windows Vista's device manager is very similar to the Windows XP and how it works. Uh, some of the icons are a little bit different. And as I mentioned, to get there, it's a little bit different. You go to your control panel, and inside the control panel is a device manager icon right there. And the device manager will look and feel and work exactly the same. Windows needs our permission to continue. Uh, the device manager is part of the user account control requirements. And as this starts up, there's our device manager. And you can see in this case that anything that is listed that has a problem, again, you have it highlighted. And it's really the same options and the same screen pieces. This is a disabled device. If I right mouse click on it, I've got the option to disable it. If I look at the properties, it tells me, yes, this device is disabled. You recall in Windows XP, a disabled device had a red X next to it. In Windows Vista, a disabled device just has an arrow that's pointing down to show that device is down. You've administratively turned off that particular device. Otherwise, the device manager used in Windows Vista is very, very similar to what you'd normally see in Windows XP. Let's review what we've learned now about our device manager. Our first question is, in Windows XP Device Manager, what does a yellow exclamation mark signify? And if you recall, we saw one of those in our previous Windows XP Device Manager, and that meant there was a problem with the Device Manager. It's also a yellow exclamation mark in the Windows Vista version as well. The next question is, in Windows Vista's Device Manager, what icon identifies a disabled device? Well, if you recall in the XP version of Device Manager, it was a red X. But in Vista, it looks a little bit different. It's an arrow that's pointing down. So a small difference between those two versions. And the last question is, how can you disable a device in Device Manager? Well, if you recall, we simply right mouse clicked on the device and looked at the properties and then changed the device usage. We also had the option in the right click menu to simply click the, the, the uh, option to disable the device. And then you've also got the option to re-enable the device right from that right click menu as well. 
That covers the requirements that we need to know all about our device manager. From 22702, section 2.3, we now know how to enable, disable, install new devices. We've seen warnings and indicators, and now you should be really comfortable with using the Windows Device Manager. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.